Well, hello again, and this is our first in our series on the new Faf Creative Icon 2. This is the unboxing. Now, this is quite a large machine, so I'm not gonna struggle with opening the box. So I'm gonna give you a, a bit of a look. Yes, it's all sealed in the box. The tapes even haven't been opened yet. So we have the this is for the box for the machine, and there is another box for the embroidery unit. So we're gonna go through each one. So the first one we're gonna be doing is this particular box here, which is for the machine head. So we're gonna go through all the accessories that are inside, where to find them um, and all those kinds of stuff. So stick with us um, as we go through. Now, hopefully I'll be able to edit out some of this fun stuff out of this video. So you don't have to watch me pulling the pull the machine out. So first thing you'll find is that this machine is quite large. Now I'm gonna see if I can bring my chair up. So these are all taped down and you'll notice that um, some of you may have noticed that there's no shipper on the outside. So you've got your box has got the styling on the outside with Creative Icon 2. So let's just open it up. Now, as we take sections out of the box, we'll go through them together. So I'm just gonna put this box on the ground because it is too tall for me to lift safely. That way you get a better view, not of my tummy, okay? Right. So the first element, there is some accessories on top. So we're gonna go through those and so that you know all the bits and pieces. Now I've got a print out of the manual here, so we're gonna go through um, all the bits and pieces that are inside. So we've got a soft cover. So this fits over the machine head, doesn't fit over the embroidery unit, but it's soft um, and it's a dust cover. So little note about that, make sure that you have your machine switched off and we'll get to that as we go through the safety when you're setting up your machine. Warranty card for the, well, we're in Australia, so we've got an Australian warranty card. If you're watching this from overseas, you might your card might look a little bit different. So we have, um, there's a difference with this machine in its power cord and I'm going to go through that with you as well because it's not just this one there is some other elements to it as well so this is your regular figure eight cord that you normally would have with most machines but you have another little addition to that so we'll get to that shortly the user guide Okay, this is in pristine. Um, I printed mine out, as you can see. I've written all over mine. So this is the user guide. If you want to update your user guide, it is available online. So you can go um, to faf.com.au and find the icon too, and you should be able to find another updated copy of the user manual. They don't print them out, but as the machine gets updated, if you want to... Uh, a uh, user guide like this you can print one out you can put it as a pdf and put it on your tablet or your ipad or whatever um, so that way you've got it but it's in the box so that's your uh, user guide the other one you have and i haven't this one at the moment is not available online but i'm going to take it out of its sleeve because i want to see what it's like too, because this is the first look I'm getting at the machine, is the Embroidery Collection Sampler Book. Okay, so it has all of the samples of all the embroideries and the fonts. That should be the fonts in the back, maybe? No. Nope. Um, 
that are in the machine. So when you are stitching out any of the designs that are in your machine, this will be helpful for you as well. It may come online as a download. I just don't know. There's nothing in the on the system yet, but um, you have this with your machine. So keep that handy because that's going to be a, a nice reference point for you um, as you use the designs in your machine. So we have our knee lifter. So, you know, for your freehand knee lift. Um, some people like that, especially if you're an applicator, you might like to change direction. We do have the pivot function, but the knee lift is helpful just to drop the feed dogs and lift um, the machine, like lift the presser foot up. So that's what it's for. A lot of us get used to the pivot function where the needle stops down and then your um, presser foot just lifts slightly. But, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll really enjoy using your um, knee lifter. So, the biggest change that I see already is this is your transformer for your machine, okay? So, your figure eight cord, like your regular power cord, clips into this element here. And this data cable, it takes data, and then you'll be able to see with the camera, it's, it's a bit blurry because I'm a little bit out of focus, but it's got four, uh, four pins inside. That is what gets connected to your power slot in the side of the machine. So not this guy anymore. This guy when it's all unwrapped gets plugged in here. Okay. Now I don't know, personally, I don't know why, but I'm imagining because there is data transfer and there's lots more happening with the machine, um, that's why they're using the bigger transformer, okay? So you need to find a space for that. Now, in the user manual, it does tell you to, when you're finished using your machine and for the day, to make sure that you turn it off at the wall so that power is not running constantly through this. Now, we all know if we have things on our sewing tables that sometimes we can put something on top of them, fabric. They might, you know, um, elements might slip over these and these over time, if they've got power running through them, could heat up so it's a really good um, safety thing and it also save you know saves your machine um, your transformer here to be able to make sure that power is running through um, when you when you're using your machine but good practice and especially in Queensland you know all those people watching in Queensland and Australia you know that we get lots of um, weather activity at different points, it's always good measure to turn your machine off at the wall or pull the, pull the plug out, okay? So even more so. So that's quite a, um, you know, it's, it's not a light one. It's a really, it really feels like it's really super solid. So that is what we need to do the power, all right? So slightly different there. So the next thing in the box we have foot control. So foot control hasn't changed, still retractable with the bigger um, foot, which is great. Now there is a optional multi-function foot control that you can get for the machine, but standard, you get the regular retractable cord um, foot control, okay? So you wanna upgrade, come and see me, I can get you a um, foot control uh, multifunction one. Otherwise, you can just use this. It works exactly the same as normal. Okay, multifunction ones. You can program them to do different things like tie offs and uh, needle up, needle down. Um, you can have a heel kick function. You can, oh, look, there's five different programmable settings, and um, you've got other features as well on the on the foot control. So it's well. Um, you may want to consider it. The 
I'll go through that before I begin because I've got a little piece of paper here that tells me everything because I can't seem to keep it all in my head. So if there's information about this on our website as well about the multifunction foot control. Okay, so it can send your machine. These are the functions you can program it for. Um, you can program up to three functions at a time. So you can program it to have one, one side, one um, selection to have to stitch in reverse, one to start your stitch, restart, one to have your foot up or extra lift, one to thread, cut your threads. Another function is needle up or down or tie off. So you've got options. So that's with the multifunction foot control. So that one is an extra purchase. So just recapping, this is the one that comes in the box. The multifunction foot control is an extra purchase, but it may be one if you think that's pretty super, then come and see us and we can organize a um, multifunction foot control for you, for your new icon too. I certainly will be getting one of those because um, of the multifunction foot controls because you know when you you can program it it's it's easy and you can get personalize your machine to exactly um, what you'd like it to do without taking your hands off your work and touching buttons so that's the really good feature with that so so in the last one is the pouch with all the accessories in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop all these aside. I actually might take that out. Now, I'm going to have a look. Now, it's important to check in when you're unpacking any machine that there aren't any super hidden items in the packaging, okay? That way, we don't go, and none of them go missing, all right? So that's part of those accessories there. So now we've got the accessories that come with the machine. Now, I, like I said, I've listed most of them on the website, um, which has a link with these videos, but just in case we're gonna run through the whole thing, that way you've got a whole list of items that you know is really good for you. Now, I'm just gonna bring it up on my got my list in front of me I just couldn't see it for all the pieces of paper so let's go right so in here you've got all your regular feet the one thing is you've got a straight stitch plate so a straight stitch plate works really well because it makes the machine only when you set it up in the machine and you you adjust like it'll automatically sense it but if you using your 6G embroidery foot, you are going to get a much better finish because it's designed to be used with this straight stitch plate. Okay, so if you have gone from sewing to embroidery and you've got the 6D foot on, which looks like this guy, okay, that's the, the most common one that we use. It gives us, um, it senses as it goes and it checks everything out. Um, that works best with this foot. Um, that foot works best with this stitch plate. Okay, so if you aren't using it already as far as on your regular, on your Icon 1, then maybe you should. But if you, definitely if you're gonna use Icon 2, it's best to use it like that. Okay, so straight stitch plate, 6D foot. <coughs> Excuse me. But we also have our Sensomatic free motion foot. We also have some little thread cones to put up on the stand and you'll see that's for the two thread stands. An array of different spool holders, a spool caps I should say, two large, two medium, one's uh, too small. So they're all here. I'm gonna pop them all back in the pouch so I don't lose them. Okay, so we've got, it says nine bobbins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. 
and they're the, the biggest size bobbins. So if you had a, a, uh, any other faff other than Icon, these are bigger bobbins than what you've had before. Um, they're, they're purple, there's only one color in these. It's a deep purple um, color, which is really lovely. And the series letter for this machine is L. So if you are looking for accessories, you've got to look for the L. So that includes the bobbins, the 6D foot and a few others um, that are designed just for the icon. And the icon too. Now thread nets, we've got four of those. Now they're going to come in handy and I would suggest that you have a look at your user manual when you want to use these. It gives some really good illustration in there of the types of thread that you would use them for. Um, these are for really for threads that you know tend to drop off the spool and can get caught underneath the bottom of your thread spool and that's what these are designed for okay to hold that thread on the cone so it doesn't drop which then doesn't catch on anything underneath and you know think of metallics or uh, decorative style threads that you sometimes have a problem with so there's a few of those in there um, obviously we've got a lint brush a screwdriver and an unpicker because we all need an unpicker, right? So they've given us another one, a grey faff one. The, um, we've got some needle sample pack there. So um, that'll get you started to give you a, a little test for a couple of different um, items there. So they've given us some universal, a wing needle, a couple of stretch needles, a jeans and an embroidery needle, okay? When you pick up your machine, you're get, definitely gonna need some more needles all right now you've spent a lot of money on this new machine buy some new needles especially for your embroidery okay because you know you'll want to get started and you know just make sure that you've got enough to get started with so this is a sample pack but make sure that you've got enough in your stash okay because the needles are the cheapest part of your whole embroidery okay so make sure that you've got a good stash now we have some feet, like this one is the 2A, which is the decorative stitch foot. Uh, most of you would be familiar. If you're not, you can get a closer look at all these different feet. I'm not going to give you a close up because these are the like standard feet that come with most machines. So 2A, blind hem foot. We've got the um, 1A, which is the decorative stitch with the IDT valley in the back. We have a zipper foot, tiny, tiny. We have a manual buttonhole foot if you want to determine the length of your buttonhole if you want to do some corded buttonholes or make your buttonhole a little bit longer than what the automatic could do then you can use that and there, again there's some really good information in the user manual for this machine about doing that the this one in the bag is the bi level top stitch um, foot now that one is a bi-level uh, foot with a guide. Now it's got a guide down the middle, so it's a bit like a stitch in the ditch foot. And one side is a little bit higher than the other. So if you're on the edge, it'll sort of sit flat on over the edge. That one is um, especially important when you are sewing the exclusive stitch techniques such as the edge stitches and the floating stitches you're going to need this foot all right and it will tell you on the machine it'll have a little foot sign with a plus on it um, so it, it's just the way this this design um, foot is designed to be one side higher than the other so that's um, why it's a little bit different you've also got a quarter inch foot so a good old trusty quarter inch okay and you've got your maxi stitch foot for those big maxi stitches. So the difference between this maxi stitch foot, which is in the number eight, it doesn't take IDT, which you can see. I'm, I'm not, it'll go too blurry if I try to get too close. All right, so, but it's a really wide foot. So what this foot does is when you put it down, it puts as much pressure on that fabric as possible so that the feed dogs can move it side to side. And those maxi stitches um, um, are designed because some of them are up to 52 millimeters wide. So you can go wide and it, rather than have your fabric in the hoop, the feed dogs actually move it from side to side. But it needs a bit more pressure than the regular um, sewing feet are. So this is a little bit wider. 
so that it puts as much pressure on there as possible to make sure that it's moving in the right direction. And this one gets used in a lot of things for um, that it have a side motion to them so that it can help that those feed dogs move that fabric across. So maxi stitch. Now uh, there are some other machines that take the maxi stitch too, but it's gonna be a big nice feature here with um, the icon too as well. Seam guide. So if you wanna have equal stitches, you can pop this through the ankle of your uh, foot and then adjust to the width and then you can stitch some straight lines. You can also um, quilt, you know, between and have them at the same distance. Okay, so that's really fun. So a lot of these um, are standard accessories, but some of them are, are super special to the icon, which is this one, which is a large spool cap that sits on top of the machine so that you can take the bigger spools. Like most machines don't have the ability to take large spools of thread. Um, there's just simply no room, but it, they need a flat base to sit on and that's what this, this one does. The other um, one here is the humper jumper or the height compensation tool, but it's also a needle threader. So you put your needle in this little slot here where it's got a, a, little, half, a little half moon that holds your needle while you change your needle. So you can get your hands out of that area and it just holds a needle and it can, you can fit it correctly. Um, so that's really fun. But the other part of this tool is that it, you know, if you've got um, a piece of fabric where it looks like your presser foot's going like this or it's going like this, you can put this in behind to keep your presser foot flat whilst you start off your sewing. So. That's a little bit of a fun tool. Most of us use it just really to help to help us thread the needle. Um, and sorry, insert the needle, I should say. Because we do have a needle threader on this machine. But it ha helps us insert the needle in the right place and it sort of helps us to make sure it gets in and gets um, inserted the right way. Now this one, this is your black bobbin case. And this black bobbin case um, the new icon 2 will tell you when you need to put this in. Now, when you need to put this in is imagine you've got a straight stitch and you're, you want to move your needle position to the left. That is when, left of center, I should say, left of center, that's when this bobbin case is the one you put in to the machine. They recommend that any needle, a straight stitch with a needle position that's left of center, that is the best bobbin case to put in is this black one. And it will give you in the information section, a little, di a little icon that sort of appears and it, it's basically tell you, hey, you've moved that needle position over this. We recommend that you put this case in, all right? This is the black case. The one that comes standard in the machine is gray. So you'll know the difference between the two. All right. I don't know the mechanics of it right now, but that is what um, they've recommended. So the machine is far more intelligent. Some of the engineers have done their thing. So if they've given us one of these, then why not give it a try and see if you get a great result. Last but not no means least of these accessories in this pouch are the automatic buttonhole. Sensomatic, it's got the USB style little connection. Um, that one plugs into the, the back of the head of the machine. And we'll, when we get a little bit closer to seeing the head of the machine, then we can show you where all those ports are. All right, so that's all the feet. There's 12 feet in the machine um, for this particular model, the Icon two, um, Creative Icon 2. And they're all listed in your accessory um, sorry in your user manual and it's got excuse me explanations of all the different feet and what they're used for so if you're not quite sure that user manual is is great but you've also got help on the machine and we'll get to that shortly all right so that's all those so now we've unpacked everything in that top section now it comes out time to bring the machine out all right so our 
demo model here at River City Sewing, and the one we're going to show you is the Purple Aurora because this one is this going to be the standard model. Now there are th another three different types at this particular stage of limited edition models. There is winter white, there is um, dusk fabric. Okay, dusk fabric is one that's really good because it actually has fabric on the front of it. And the other one is, uh, let me see, Northern Lights. I was about to say Northern Sky and I, I didn't think that was right. So Northern Lights. And that particular one is sort of uh, dark teal, but underneath it's finish. It's got like this metallic sort of um, finish that looks like it moves. So they've all got something a little bit different. The winter white has got this graphic that's in silver that sort of makes it sort of sparkle from every angle. Um, the Northern Lights is made to look like you're looking at the Northern Lights. It's done with that, that green sort of sky and it's got this little silver thing happening underneath. And the um, dust fabric, they've actually gone through and put this beautiful um, stain dust resistant fabric on the front panels of your machine and it just looks so lovely. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit torn. We took the beautiful um, Purple Aurora and look, they're going to be all great no matter which one you choose. But you, if you're looking for one of the limited edition models, you can go on the website and have a closer look. But don't leave it too long because there's only 275 of each one around the world. So it just depends if we're able to get you the one you want. Winter White's been very popular and I'd really love to see that dust fabric too. So... Right, the next part of this is looking at the machine. So I'm going to come over and pop the machine up here so we can both get a closer look. Okay, so you can see from the back, um, before I turn it around, something's changed here as well. This is the new... Um, embossed faff logo in the back which is really lovely now before i get into doing that i'm checking the inside of my the of the packaging making sure i haven't forgotten anything so hello purple aurora aren't you gorgeous all right here we go so i'm going to leave it turned towards me till I can get the tapes off so I can see everything then I'm going to turn it towards you so you can have a look as well. So there's lots of tapes on the machine through um, to help through the transportation process. So you've got to make sure you get all these off before you switch it on. Now I did have a little rubbish bin here but it doesn't matter. So just watch um, as you remove the tapes. So there's um, a couple, one across the bed of the machine. There was one here on the corner, one here on top. There's one across the whole bed of the machine that holds the accessory tray on. Okay, it's got one of those um, desiccants in there. And then the other one is we've got the accessory tray, which we're going to remove. Now there's a couple of red clips. One of the red clips that you would have, you'll find, falls out as you open it up because it's stuck in this little hole here. And as you remove the accessory tray, Oh, where's my camera? It disappears. All right, that's fine. But that was in there just to give that support. All right, so when you take it out, it'll fall out, which is fine. And in here, you'll have a space to put your straight stitch plate when you're not using it, or if when you've got your straight stitch plate on, your zigzag plate will fit right in here and store away. In here, we've got some storage in the back. And on the front, we have some more tapes to keep this closed. So let's open that up. 
and remove those tapes. You'll see already that they've made some changes to the markings on the front of the accessory tray for this um, markers and they're all in like stainless steel. They've got a protective cover on the top. Sorry, I can't see and this is really strong tape so just go nice and gently and it'll remove that plastic and I'll come back from the inside. Okay, so we've got one. And then we've got to do the same for the other one. Just make sure you hold on to your accessory tray. You don't want to be... You can put this on a flat surface. I just, if I put it on a flat surface, you won't see what I'm doing. Okay, so you get a, just got a nice firm grip and undo that tape there. Right, pop that aside. So again, we've got this beautiful styling here and we have the color coding inside. Now, some of you, if you've taken the limited edition colors may have a different co um, color coding inside, um, but because this is purple Aurora, um, that codes its inside here. All right, so I'm gonna turn her around now so that you can get a closer look and I'm gonna show you I'll see if I'm going to drop the camera back a little bit so we can get a better view. Okay, just trying to adjust uh, the camera so you can get a better view. Um, the finish is, um, this is the Purple Aurora, as we said. This is like a piano or really um, high gloss finish. And we have the new styling down here with the um, measurement as well. The machine is the similar size to Icon 1, so but big work area. Um, you know, we've got a really good view here from the front down to the needle. So the last piece of the unpacking puzzle that we need to do in this particular case is to remove this red clip. Now, this red clip is here to give support during the transport process. I would recommend if you are thinking of moving your machine a lot that you keep this red clip and that way when your machine is moving it gives that this whole big top arm here because that's being held up gives it support all right and how that move how that works is it's a little clip and it just moves out like that it just wiggles out this guy's going around the um the shaft where the needle is so it's just a matter of wiggling out and we've just got a little protective piece that sits um, underneath it so that now is ready for us to to turn on so underneath here we'll get a better look at the view from the top is all of your um, stitch menus so these are a little bit more visible up here that you can sort of see your stitch menus and just a glimpse of your sub menus. Now this isn't all the, the stitches in your machine. There's quite a few in there, but it just gives you a hint of the kind of stitches in each one of these menus. So um, if you go into your manual, you'll be able to see it, but when we turn the machine on, you'll be able to see all of the different stitches that are in the machine and there's lots of decorative there's ribbon stitches there's, there's um, specialty techniques there's lots of utility stitches buttonholes eyelets um, quilting style stitches and look lots of fun you're going to have a whole raft of fun um, stitching out all these fun here with these new stitches now the interesting thing here is that we still have this great telescopic stand that pulls up and it clicks. So you've got two spool holders here and that big spool that we thought I showed you earlier that sits here so that you can put your um, bigger spools of thread on and it sort of keeps it nice 
You can push this one down to lay it down if you've got some um, smaller threads, but you can, as long as you've got that um, big spool cap holder, and I'll bring it back out because I don't know its real name, but it's a big spool cap to me. And it sits on like that, okay? So if you have a large spool of thread and it's moving about, that's what these guys are for, these spool holders too can sit on there and help um, hold your thread into place. If you don't need it, you can just remove it and just pop your thread on, okay? The other spool over here is designed to cake, take your bobbin thread. And this one can be threaded through your needle and this one goes up and it can go through the thread path to wind your bobbin. Okay, and we're gonna get into that a little bit in, the, in one of the following videos, but. Um, so you've got two, so you don't have to unthread your machine to wind your bobbin because there's different motors or um, running for the bobbin winder. You've got a different thread path so that A, you don't get tangled and B, you don't need to, you know, unthread your machine and do the whole thing again. All right, so bobbin, or if you've got twin needles, you can use this for when you're using your twin needles, right? But most of the time, bobbin thread, needle thread, you got your thread tree and lots of fun. Now, if you're the kind of person who does lots of embroidery and you have your, you know, Robson Anton or one of those, you can not use your thread tree if you don't want to. Put all of this down and put your thread down here like this. Close that up and you can stitch away with your thread inside the, inside the cover. So you've got a couple of options. All right, if you want to use a, um, you know, a spool holder, you can also do that because there's space for that and little elements for the holes of that sitting here at the back. But really nice long handle. It's got the rubber um, underneath the grip for the handle so that you can get a really tight grip. Um, it's around 14 kilos, this machine. So, it, you know, it is, it is substantial. But they've specially designed the base of the machine to stop it from moving around. So there's really put some thought in. Anyway, there's not a lot of gap between the, um, the base of the sew base and the bottom of the machine. So there's lots of weight in there so that it keeps your machine really super stable. All right, so that is for us the new beautiful Icon 2 Purple Aurora, um, the sew head. I mean, we can see over here, um, you might be able to see very well, but hopefully these buttons are little squares and they're almost like a soft touch. It's got the logo here, but the beautiful piano finish is just gorgeous. So the piano finish goes all along the front of the machine. We've got a matte finish here and then we've got the white at the back. So lots of nice, uh, things I do love the purple aurora I think it's just a gorgeous color it's just it's almost metallic purple it's just lovely I mean in on this side um, as you look at it it just looks like a beautiful metallic purple it's just yummy so who doesn't like purple right? I know that some people don't like purple that's why there's a choice of colors at the moment so but it's really great so free arm we still have our free arm um, like we saw and um, again this has been specially shaped here so if you're doing um, you know sleeves and cuffs and anything that bags that you need to to work around this has been shaped in there so that it has that beautiful lines as well so hopefully not much gets caught in there 